The greatest power you possess is your ability to choose. Join Lowe's Moore as he reveals how you can begin to maximize that power by exploring yourself on the deepest levels and committing to making lasting and positive changes. Get ready to achieve breakthroughs that will lead to accelerated growth and transformation because you are now tuned in to The Blueprint. Good evening. This is Lowe's Moore and welcome to The Blueprint Podcast. Man, I am really excited. I, I don't know about you, but uh, I'm hoping that we, we got some crazy weather going on here. Uh you know, around the United States. Um, I'm here in uh, sunny Palm Beach or West Palm Beach. And and at home, it's like tropical storms. I mean, <laughs> we just, I was just talking to my daughter, man. She she walked outside and showed flood outside, uh, outside the house. And it's just raining like cats and dogs. And, you know, it happened once before. I was hanging out with my, with my son, Losey. We were in, uh, we were, in California, right? And, you know, a place where they say, you know, this, this, you know, every occasion you have some earth tremors, some occasional, you know, uh, earthquakes and stuff like that. We are in California and they had a earthquake in Baltimore, uh, Maryland area uh, while I was in California. It was, it's just crazy. I leave town, stuff happens. I mean, but uh, uh, I want to wish everyone the best there, man. Um, be safe, man, and make sure that you have the necessary tools uh, and equipment um, and food just in case uh, you need it. Um, I left the house. I don't, I don't know if I left anything, uh, you know. Uh, I don't know if I left out any flashlights or anything like that. I did get a generator, though. Last time I had to borrow a generator, but now we have a generator, and so that's, uh, that, you know, that's good. So we continue to pray for those who are you know, having some bad weather out there, stay safe and, you know, and just be blessed. I mean, last week, I want to apologize for last week. We had uh, the great, uh, my good friend, uh, Dr. Randy Clark from the Global Awakening Ministries uh, on last week. He was, well, he was supposed to be on. And at the last minute, we had some technical difficulties and we had to end up canceling. That's the first time we had, we had canceled the show since the pandemic. And you know, I really wanted Randy to, to, uh, he's just such a beautiful, humble human being. I wanted everybody to meet Randy and, um, but here's good news. September the 5th, uh, Dr. Randy Clark will be back. We rescheduled with him and it, I'm excited that he's going to be back. And man, this guy is sought after everywhere in the world. And he called me and said, Hey, I got another date for you. And I, I just, he said, I just plugged you in. And I was ex really excited about that. So um, I'm looking forward to having Randy on. It's, it's just going to be an awesome, awesome uh, time. And, you know, tonight, um, this this is the first time. I, I want to say thank you. I want to give a couple of thank yous. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Rich Douglas. He's a gentleman that started me out with the podcast. And, uh, you know, he was said, let's just do it. And, and, and of course we did. And uh, Rich, somewhere down after nine shows, uh, he took another position and we had to end up going in another direction. This is how good God is, right? Three days before he, he gave me the news that he wasn't gonna be able to do the podcast. A gentleman by the name of Steve Vaccaro gave me a call and heard that I was doing the podcast, wanted to help. So Steve Vaccaro on the chapters wrap, uh, just right away, without seamless, just, you know, threw us into a schedule of uh, other shows that he had. And we've been running with Steve, Steve Vigaro and the Chapters Rap uh, for over a year uh, now. And, you know, and I want to say thank you to him. And I want to say thank you to the New York video group for each week coming on and making the show what it is by the technology and production behind the scenes that you guys don't really see. And they've just been wonderful. And I want to say thank you. And, you know, this week we decided to transition and from and, and produce it ourselves. So this is will be the first show 
that we're we're actually producing ourselves of the Blueprint Podcast. And so we're excited about that. So, you know, we hope everything goes seamlessly. We hope that there, you know, you know, there's nothing goes wrong. Um, but, you know, if it does, you know, hey, we're going to keep doing it until we get it right. So, uh, you know, again, thank you to the to that. I call them family. They still family, regardless of we're not. That doesn't mean we're not going to work together or we're not going to do other things together. Uh, it just means that we moved in another direction and, and we're truly thankful and appreciative of what they've done for us. I'm always available for them and hopefully they'll be available for me as well. So let's jump right into it. Uh, each week, you know, uh, I, I dropped this pebble in the pond. I'm, I just found a pebble, but I'm just going to drop it in the pond right now. I just dropped it in the pond. We're expecting a ripple effect of this show. And, and I'm excited because I, I don't want to give away the guess. Uh, I'm just going to do my thing because tonight, uh, Lowe's Moore the third. I'm a junior. Lowe's Moore the third, or what, who we call Lozy, will be hosting the show. I'm just starting the show. And then I'm going to get out the way because I'm in Palm Beach, West Palm Beach, Florida. And I'm going to go to dinner with my some friends. And of course, you know, my wife is going to be watching no matter what. Right. She's whether she's eating, driving, she's going to be on there watching. She's watching now, you know. And so we're going to be watching. We know that Lozy's going to be doing a fantastic job. He has some amazing and wonderful guests on tonight. You know, and, and I, I'm excited. So uh, let me get right to my part so I can get out the way and hand it over to him. As you know, I always have a book of the week. Right. And so this week's book is by T.D. Jakes. It's called Instinct. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful book. If you're trying to be successful. Right. And, and you're trying to move forward, whether you be in ministry or any one of the other seven spheres of influence, six spheres of influence, yeah, whether it's business law, whatever it is, this is a powerful, powerful book uh, to have on your shelf. I always say that if you're going to be successful, you need to be, you need to have a library in your home, right? You always ask the question, you know, how come poor folks don't have libraries in their house and rich people do, right? That's why I say tonight, start your own library. Right. And and you'll find resources and success to start coming your way, you know, but you've got to get this book by T.D. Jakes. It's an awesome read. And he always say, if you if you're the smartest one in the room, you need to get in a room where you feel stupid. Right. And then you can grow. Right. So that, that you know, you got to get this book. It's, it's just awesome. And then might as well. The word of the week is instinct. Right. And I, I know I knew a lot of stuff on the basketball court when I was playing, right? I've learned a lot of stuff about it. But some of the most important things that happened was by instinct, right? Sometimes you could you, people are saying a whole bunch of different things to you, but it's your instincts. You got to have the right instinct in who you, how you choose your friends, decisions you make to go out, uh, you know, just decisions in life. You got to use your instincts. Sometimes people are saying so many got so many voices in your head, but sometimes you just got to learn how to use your instincts. And of course, I had on the show Hill Hopper, who had his son, Pierce Hopper, uh, his little son. And we started the affirmation moment, the Hill and Pierce Hopper affirmation moment. And I think that when you get up in the morning, right, you got to talk to yourself when you get up in the morning. So many crazy things on when you turn the television on, so many crazy things going in your mind. But when you get up and say something positive to yourself in the morning, encourage yourself in the morning, these affirmations become very powerful in your life. So here's tonight's affirmation. It states, I believe in the voice in the back of my mind. Right. This is my soul talking. Right. This is my soul talking to me. Right. And uh, that's the affirmation of the week. And then, you know, a few this in this season. This is my second season. So I started a movie and movie of the week and and music of the week. And this week, of course, I kept in the same line instinct. I don't know if you ever had an opportunity to see it with Anthony Hop Hopkins and uh, Cuba Gooden Jr. I don't even know if many people ever heard of it. It's just an awesome movie. 
um, about uh, natural instincts and very just a very powerful movie. You get to check that out, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And and one of my kids that I mentored actually is in the movie, and uh, you you'll check him out too as well. And then the music, the music of the week is Michael Jackson's "Man in the Mirror." Right? If it, if there's anything that's going going crazy, uh, uh, you know, before you judge somebody else. Man, I want you to take a look in the mirror at yourself and make sure that you're not a part of the problem, but you're a part of the solution. So uh, this is my time. Um, I'm going to turn it over to to Lozy, to Lozmore the third, and he's going to be the host for the rest of this evening. Uh, to the guests, thank you for coming on. Appreciate you guys and be blessed. And I, I, I wish you much, much success. God bless you guys. Hey, Dad, thank you so much. I'm really excited, everyone, to be here on the Blueprint Podcast. And I have some amazing uh, guests for you today. Um, three individuals who are really close to my heart. You know, um, we talk all the time, we work together, we study together. And I'm just really excited to kind of pick their brain and, you know, for you all to hear the nuggets that um, they have to give. So I'm going to jump right into it. The first person I'm going to bring on is um, Karen Michelle. Karen, she returned to Los Angeles in 2016 after a brief stint in the Midwest and East Coast. Prior to her return to LA, she studied acting in Philadelphia area. She is currently creating a VO demo in areas of animation and game in video games. And she's writing a project about Black women in the academy and building her own VO um, voiceover, that is, home studio. Now, get ready, y'all, because Karen received an A.B. from Princeton University, an M.S. in Public Administration from Villanova University, an M.S. from the Communications Department at Cornell University, and a Ph.D. in Critical Studies from the University of South Carolina School of Cinema Television. She is an independent scholar who has published on African-American media, theater, and romantic comedies. Her research and her teaching interests include race and representation, class, gender, early African-American theater history, African-American film directors, adaptation, romantic comedies, telefantasies, and telenovelas. So before I bring Karen in, I'm going to play a, a clip for you all. I want to see my daughter. Of course. Okay. Uh, Ms. Thompson. You should know that Emma suffered a subarachnoid hemorrhage. There's still significant swelling. We're hoping it subsides. But what if it doesn't? The damage will be irreparable. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Karen. That is, this is. Thank you so much for joining me on The Blueprint today. Um, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Of course. So really quickly, I want to ask, that's a that's a whole bunch of degrees. Like, um, how, like, how did that process even start? How did like, like, where did you kind of find like the passion to to go to school and uh, to study and pursue your career? All that together. Um. I'd say after undergrad, because I thought I was going to be a medical doctor and I decided to move in another direction. So then I um, got my uh, master's at Villanova, worked for a bit um, in telecom, realized I really didn't necessarily enjoy that. So went back to school. And then while I was at Cornell, then I realized, you know, I might do this teaching thing. <laughs> so, so um, and then, but I always in the back of my mind had film and television. So when I, just just to correct you, um, it, USC, it's the University of Southern California, not South Carolina. Uh, <laughs> um, so when I came out to California, initially I was in the School of Communication, I moved over to the School of Cinema Television. And because my passion has always been to be able to um, get involved in entertainment. 
So studying it was my entree. It, I felt safe doing that. Um, yeah, and then after a while in there, it's just like, yeah, you know, you need to do what you really love. And what I really love is actually the creation part of it. So that's, yeah. Yeah, and I'd also say in my family, um, people just like, on my mom's side of the family, education has always been really important because yeah, like my mom has an ED, my younger sister has a PhD too, so yeah. Just, wow. My, my dad has an MS, so yeah. Just Wow, so question. How do you find the balance between it all, pursuing a career as an actor as well as all of the amazing things that you're able to do? Um, well, because I do view my teaching as, it's my investment job, as uh, Dewan Johnson likes to say. So <laughs> of investment jobs, it gives me a type of flexibility uh, to be able to do auditions, take classes and do things that I really do appreciate. So yeah, there are times when I can get frustrated in that it's just like, no, but I wanna be doing more in acting. But, um, and I, you know, and I do pursue it, but it, yeah, what it, what teaching allows me to do, um, it just gives me that flexibility to be able to, um, you know, both, engage with students, which is always fun because a lot of the time it's the first time that they're engaging with the topics that, that I've been talking about. And mm -hmm. yeah, and then uh, I can transition. Yeah, it's not, I guess I'm so used to it. It's not that hard though. Right. Sometimes I think being in my mind a lot, the challenge is when I'm acting to make sure that I'm present physically because I can like sometimes stay in my head too much. Mm -hmm. I definitely, definitely feel that. Well, I'm excited for that. Um, we're gonna we're gonna bring on because we want to get all of our guests together on our screen so we can really, really get into it. So we're gonna pull up on our next guest. Her name is Lauren Sloan. I'm gonna throw this up here. Lauren is a native of Chicago, Illinois. She's based in Los Angeles, California. She's an associate producer at Genius Produced, an actor, writer, director, comedian, and a voiceover artist. Come on with that silky, silky voice. All right, so before we bring Lauren on, I'm gonna also play you a short little clip. Good afternoon, everybody. Where can I get you? Well, we're trying to get a good look at how these guys are moving and migrating. What do you know? Well, we've been monitoring them for some time now. Uh, I'll pull the satellite reports and put something together for you to take a look at, but I can tell you right now, they're being pretty careful. How do you mean? Well. They obviously have some intelligence of their own. Are those Doc Martens? Yeah. Those are some super cool shoes. Thanks. My son, he's 14. He's like super goth. He would love those shoes. Yeah, he's really into it. He paints his nails, and I had to teach him how to do the eyeliner. Because you know how when boys don't know how to do it right, they put too much on the bottom and it gets all messy? Mm -hmm. So we... <laughs> yes. Hello, Lauren. Hello, Lowe's. How are you? Hi, Karen. Hey, Lauren. I'm doing pretty good. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you oh. for having me. I'm very excited to be here. All right, I want to ask a couple of questions. I definitely sure. for sure. So tell me about um, being associate producer at Genius Produce. How did that come about? That was something that I, I kind of find serendipitous. It's, it's odd. Um, I found this job listing for a, um, I actually started at my company as an executive assistant. So it's as executive assisting a director. So as an actor and a creative, it's generally known in, especially in Los Angeles, that if you ever apply with a director, you do not tell them that you are an actor, a writer. You just, you know, you don't. It's kind of one of those unspoken rules you have. But um, I had the interview, it was great. I didn't mention any of my Hollywood extracurriculars. <laughs> And my boss then, after the interview, Instagram stalked me and mm -hmm. found my actor profile. And she was like, oh, you should have mentioned this in the interview. And from there, 
Um, I came in and started acting in our projects. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Genius Produced specializes in um, cinematic online education. So we create supplemental materials uh, that are really akin to something you'd see on Netflix, and we bring that into the classroom. So especially uh, in terms of the pandemic and kind of keeping students involved, studies have shown that um, visual arts and visual representation when tied in to uh, school curriculum does help increase retention and, um, you know, it increases test scores and really helps students, especially those like myself that are visual learners. So uh, it's been a great opportunity just kind of like helping to mold and shape because um, I made a promise with my boss after serving as a assistant for a year, I can then move on to you know, the other things I wanted to do in the industry, she noticed that I had a really kind of creative eye and I'm a writer as well. So being able to kind of craft a vision really kind of helped and um, to add to the quality of our company's product. So I got bumped up to a producer position and I've been there doing that for about a year and a half now. It's Hashtag great. goals. It is. That's goals. <laughs> also, great. I'm glad that when the Instagram stalking came, the material was appropriate because, you yeah. know, it could get a little crazy sometimes. It, so. it sometimes, totally. <laughs> totally, right. yeah. So, so, you know, it, it all worked out on that front. Right, of course. So if you're listening out there, make sure your Instagram and your Facebook and your social media is cleaned up in a representation of you. All right. <laughs> so we're going to bring on our last guest. Um, her name is Educan Looks. Educan Looks is a St. Louis native. She relocated to Los Angeles by way of Miami, Florida. She has appeared in national commercials, stage, TV, and film. In addition to being an actress, she is a licensed real estate agent, a licensed cosmetologist, and is currently helping others with their health and fitness as a certified personal trainer while consistently studying her craft and pursuing her goal of being a consistent working actress. So before we bring Edricant on, we're gonna play some clips for you. I like it. Don't. You have 50,000 viewers waiting for Alex's streaming. Where's your mask? It is my streaming. I can't wear the mask. Get dressed. I can't find my spare keys. And I wouldn't left which tells me somebody Mom. came up in here. How could she not hear someone come in here? That tells me she knows something. Okay. They've been doing this for four years, watching me, taking things. I see the same cars without a state license following me everywhere I go, and your father knows it. I hear you, but Marie isn't helping people take things from you, and neither is Dad. He's in on it. Oh. He in on it. She said he's in on it. <laughs> Edric Ken, thank you for joining us on the Blueprint Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. This is so exciting. So I have a, couple, a quick question for you, too. Like, you talk about um, you're a licensed real estate agent, a licensed cosmetologist, and a certified personal trainer. That's yeah. How do you balance all of your passions with, for all of those things with also being an actor? Well, they, those, those careers came by me, survival, right? It's like, because I wanted so much, I want so much to be a successful actress, I needed to find things and, or occupations that would allow me to have an open schedule. You know, when I was doing real estate, I haven't been actively doing it, though I still keep my license, uh, uh, you know, up to par. Uh, so I can't still sell a house or a condo, but mm. I, it allowed me to be able to be, to be, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, flexible. Hello. Flexible with my scheduling, right? When I could, I could set my own schedule. Same thing with cosmetology. If I wanted to braid a hair, if I braid a head, or if I wanted to do someone, you know, Corn rolls or whatever it might be, I can do it at my at my leisure. So it allowed me and freed me up to be able to go to auditions, you know, take a class, take a workshop, or uh, just be more flexible. So that's that's how that came about. Whoa. Okay, and tell us a little bit about like personal training. I know that. I love that 
How do you get into it? Well, I've always, yeah, I've been a fitness. I moved to, from St. Louis, just a little backstory. From St. Louis, I moved to Miami. So from the Midwest, when I got to Miami, I saw all these great bodies. I've always been small, but I wasn't toned or tightened or anything like that. And I saw these great bodies. So I'm like, I need to get in the gym. So I've been in the gym since 92. However, when I got when I got here, I started working out more, and then I became a, a ambassador for um, the, the uh, highest nutritional company in the world. I won't say their name, but became an ambassador for them, and then started doing fit camps for them, mm-hmm. and then as a wellness coach. And then I was like, I don't want to just be a wellness coach. I want to be certified. So I went through NASM's pro- program and got my certification about two and a half years ago, and I've been training ever since. Wow. See, look, I had to take some notes because we out here, we talking about successful individuals in this industry, balancing, you know, all of the craziness of life, as well as this, this, this um, career to pr- as an actor. Like some people don't understand. They think like, oh, you just, you make it uh, and you make it and you just been there the entire time. They don't know all of the little things that go into making sure that you can actually pursue your career mm-hmm. because yeah. things cost money. So yeah. I'm going to leave it there because you got to find some way to pay. You got to find some way to get some health insurance. You got to find some way to do something to be sustainable. So oh, I'm so excited to have all three of you here. Uh, we do this all the time. I'm not on the Blue Paint Podcast. So uh, right. y'all just going to get a little bit of a glimpse into what it's like to be on our, our Zoom calls. So yeah. enjoy. <laughs> so we're going to get into it. I want to talk about the first time that you all realized that you were passionate about acting. Um, and kind of if there was a specific moment that you felt like that happened, because I know sometimes, and I'll make this question short because I'm getting long winded. I know sometimes we get swayed by a traditional, a more traditional way of life. So when did you decide, like, I want to be an actor. I want to pursue this. I want to do this. So whoever, like, um, let's go with Educan first. Let's see. what. Okay. Yeah, for me, it wasn't one of those situations where I saw a famous actress on TV and I'm like, oh, I want to grow up and be an actress. I started out dancing and I did a lot of that when I lived in Miami. And then when I got to L.A. and I booked my first national commercial in Miami and there wasn't much dancing at much acting at all, more so dancing around. But it it made me feel like, OK, I, I this is something that I want to do. I want to do commercials. So it started out there. And then when I got to L.A. and I started doing, you know, going on auditions and stuff and I wasn't extensively uh, traditionally trained, you know, though I can dance. I had some training and they moved so fast. So I kind of just migrated towards acting because the dancing and the choreography was so fast for me. And I'm like, this is this right here is not your lane. So I started taking classes and that's how the acting came about. And I loved it. You know, I did some stage. I actually, my first stage performance was with, um, you might be too young, Lowe's, but your parents might know, um, uh, uh, Lawanda Page from Samson, Sanford and Son on um, Aunt Esther. So I got to perform with her at the Wilshire Evil years ago. So that really felt good to be on stage. It was like, I like stage. And then it just started snowballing from there. So that's my story. Uh, with my acting, how I got into, you know, wanting to do acting more so than dancing. Nice. What about you, Lauren? Hmm. I can't think of any one particular instance. Um, I was always a very dramatic kid. (laughs) Um, Surprise, surprise. But um, I really like... Um, just being on stage, it felt natural. Even, you know, we would do a acting out a play in elementary school and I really found myself kind of like getting into it and going with it. Now, um, my parents are, you know, very traditional people. My mom is the queen of, okay, cool, but you still need to pay your bills. So (laughs) it's, it's been a lot of like balancing, you know, your creative passion and then also, your your sustainability, I guess I'll put it. Uh, for me, um, I've always been involved in in children's theater, um, and it just 
became kind of a, a fun thing. Now transitioning into film and television in college, um, Chicago, like early 2000s, Chicago became a really big filming city, a big production city because they got the tax breaks and everything else. So movies were always coming into film. Um, the film Proof was on my campus. I have a funny story of being injured by Anthony Hopkins. It's an accident, but um, just seeing the trailers on campus and kind of like feeling that vibe of, you know, oh, so these are the production trucks and like, I wonder what that person does. Oh, that's the wardrobe crew. It just, I've always been that person that's been interested in the inner workings, how this works behind the scenes. Um, before I got into really committing myself to acting, I also worked in live music. I, I did a lot of event and um, fan engagement. So it was a lot of also being interested in what goes on behind the scenes. What are the roadies doing? What are So it just kind of fell into an inner working thing. Then it became knowledge of, oh, well, they're paying people to be extras and they were plucking kids off campus. And it's like, oh, hey, money for the weekend. So let me just carry my book bag in the background of the scene. And, you know, it just became a habit of like, oh, I want to do that. And then it became, you know, people just moving you in. Oh, let's get you in front, do this. So I just sort of fell into it, but it's probably one of the most, going with the word of the day, instinctual things I've ever done because it's, it's like breathing to me. You know, and so just being able to express myself on stage or in front of the camera and create projects, it's, you know, very comforting and nurturing for me. And that's sort of how I got into it. That's awesome. Also, yeah. I know, so as a college student, yeah. any way you can make some extra cha-ching, cha-ching, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have to do it. And it's the best way. What what uh, amazing way to do it than to yeah. be inspired by, you know, film. And we might have, if we have time, we might need to hear some tea on Anthony Hopkins and how he <laughs> injured you. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> okay. quick, quick, quick story. They have the, you know, the trailers on University Avenue. That was the uh, street right outside of my dorm building. I'm running late to class, not paying attention to the way the trailer doors open because sometimes that chain doesn't catch and it opens free. I was running as he threw a door open and I mm. ran into the door. You heard it first here on the Blueprint <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was like, oh, I'm so I'm like, it's cool. It's fine. And it wasn't until I actually got to class. I was like, wait a minute. Listen. Was that Hannibal Lecter that hit me with the door? Yeah, that's how that works. So. We accept uh, payment in form of jobs now. Thank you very much. If I knew <laughs> what I knew. <laughs> exactly. All right, Karen, let's jump into you. What did, when did you first realize you were passionate about uh, acting? Um, I think I'd known for a while in my, you know, even in like elementary school, I remember I played. I played the part of the headless horseman and there, uh, uh, Ichabod Crane, unfortunately was a boy I didn't like. And I, so I took pleasure in like nailing him with, the uh, um, <laughs> with the little head that I threw at him. I, I, I really did enjoy that. And then it, when I was in college, I was with the theatrical group, um, triangle there. Uh, and when I, I had hit a crossroads, because as I told you earlier, I realized, okay, medicine is not for me. If I could do anything in the world, what would I do? And I felt it was acting, but I didn't have enough confidence in myself to do that. So I went the more circuitous route because my parents are similar to Lauren's parents. And then it was just like, yeah, this is nice, but how are you going to eat? Like you need a job. So it was like, okay, so let me study this. And then and so after I had done that for long enough and then realized there are certain things within academia that is just like, yeah, not really for me. So it's like, so, you know, you only get one life. So then it was like, okay, so I'm gonna do acting. And so when I actually started, I was in Pennsylvania, shout out to the Actors Lab, yay, thanks. Um, and I mean, I knew I liked it, but we'd have like a scene night or an opportunity to, um, I'd be able to write and then see people do my stuff. And then I'd be up almost all night. And I was like, what's going on? And it's like, you're so excited because you're doing what you love. That's what's going on. And so that's when, you know, then I just finally decided to, 
like, well, let's go to Los Angeles because there ain't nothing really happening in Pennsylvania. So let's just see. Let's just roll the dice, see what happens. And so that's how it happened. Wow. Yeah. I mean, for anybody who's who's watching or listening, um, if you if you didn't get that from this, those messages, if you are passionate about something, you only have one life to live, you know, go for it, do it, you know, be smart about it, plan, make sure you can do your things, but also go for it, you know? Um, and so, all right. So I have a question. I'm going to, we're going to go through this again, but for, for Ed, you can start off. I want to hear about a challenge that you've had in the industry um, and how you've overcome it. Or if you haven't overcome, have you, if you haven't overcome it, if you haven't overcame it yet, how are you doing that? Uh, I think for me right now, most recently is just the lack of auditioning opportunities for myself. So the way that I have be, have decided to overcome them is start looking for the work for myself, you know, um, getting on these actors websites, actors access, LA cast. And we've talked about this, right? Because I think with all actors, our struggle generally is not enough audition, right? You know, so a very few are getting plenty of auditions. And then there's some, like myself, it's like, what's happening? What's going on? So I'm finding that to be my most recent challenge. So I'm just looking for the work for myself and, uh, you know, presenting myself on my socials, you know, showing what I can do through my socials because, I, I can't depend on anybody else to put my clips out or to show what I can do. So I've just been using, utilizing my, my social media platforms and looking for the work for myself. Wow. Controlling what you can control. That, exactly. that definitely takes a lot of the pressure off of you. Yeah. That's awesome. What about you, Lauren? It's kind of the same thing. It's that availability of opportunity. And um, one of the things that has really kind of pushed me is to create them yourself and you know it's the beauty of being a writer and producer and director is that you have that control to be able to navigate those spaces and kind of build your own entity you know look at Issa Rae and how she started with her you know her, her web series and that's evolved not only into an HBO series she's also running reality television she's owning visits so it's about you know creating your own opportunities. Um, we are working on original projects because the one thing that really gets me, especially as a black woman, as a plus size woman, as a queer woman, it's that we don't often see ourselves in the same light that um, other actors of other ethnicities get. You know, you can very easily see John as a lawyer or a doctor or, you know, but for a lot of us, it is either single mother or, you know, convict or, you know, thug. So we're trying to promote the opportunities ourselves and, you know, showing the entertainment industry and showing Hollywood that black people are not a monolith, that, you know, we come from all backgrounds, all, you know, um, socioeconomic, religious, what have you. And we can do many things. We are lawyers, we are doctors, we are judges, we are anything, everything. And, you know, by creating these own, our own uh, systems and creating our own projects, we're able to showcase and show people, see, look, I, I could be a, I could be a judge very easily. You know, we exist. So uh, putting yourself out there, creating your own opportunities and showing the world who we are is, I think, the biggest way to combat that challenge. Definitely hear that. Yeah. 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 I mean, I just have to echo what my, you know, colleagues and friends have said, you know, it's about uh, creating opportunities for yourself. And so um, whether that's going to be, you know, um, you know, looking at the shows that you ideally want to be cast on and then looking up the CDs and, you know, seeing how you can interact with them um, and start building a relationship on social media. Um, creating your own content because you know that there are not a lot of stories about, uh, you know, I know uh, Sandra O's new show, The Chair, is on and it's about academia, but I also know that the poor black woman in the show is like, that's a story in and of itself, what she's going through, and I could flesh out that story. So 
I will be, you know, writing things along those lines. But yeah, so yeah, I mean, and you just know that it is because I was um, talking to some young girls uh, a couple of weeks ago and they were asking me about acting and I was telling them, you know, okay, it's a craft, you need to study it, et cetera, et cetera. But you just need to persevere because I told them, and I know we've all heard this story, but I told them the George Clooney story. Like as much as you can look at George Clooney and just be like, okay, yeah, he was George Clooney. But George Clooney had to like went through like between 10 to 12 pilots before he was on ER. Like he had been on a couple of shows, but it wasn't until ER that he had that breakthrough and waiting for that to happen was not a little, <laughs> a little not niche in time. So, and his advice to us is always, basically you just have to stay in it. And so as frustrated, cause you can get frustrated. I mean, I'm sure all of us can tell you the frustrations <laughs> that we have, but you just have to, you know, just, you know, literally dust yourself off and keep going. Yeah. yeah. And the thing that a lot of people also don't realize about the industry too, is that the people that do make it, they don't realize that they're usually on like year 10 to 15. Right. You know, even the new kids that are out right now, those kids have been hustling since they were six, you know, but here they are at 20, 22 with the show. But it, again, it's putting in the work and persevering because that's, that's really all you can do. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. And then, and I'll, I'll add to that, even though there are children who and actors who have been in the industry for like 10 years, when you're utilizing, like I was saying, utilizing your social your social media platform, a lot of people who have who've been on the social media two, three, four, five years get those opportunities because they have the eyes on them. I mean, look at, um, I know she was an actor before, but I think social media catapulted her career. And I'm talking about um, the beautiful Tabitha Brown. So she ate that sandwich, right, on social media when she was driving for Uber, and it took off Took off from there. She had a viral video. So, you know, you have those who have invested those years, but then you have those opportunities that social media um, presents as well that, that can help you with your yeah. career. I really feel like, especially from sometimes for the people looking out and at us, they sometimes view, it's hard not to view like, why are you not there yet? Or why are uh, you should, you should be on these TV shows or you should be, but it, it, it really is a process. Um, and I know for myself, I'm just gonna plug these amazing individuals that I have, um, but it's, it's just as important to network and, and work and have strong relationships horizontally as it is vertically. And wow. like I'll, I'll talk like if if everyone saw the videos between me and Educan, we got to work on a project together through referral. And then Karen, Karen has a project. Oh, I might need you to like help like edit a couple of things. And I'm like, oh, I have that skill, and she has these skills. Oh, and then Lauren, oh, Lauren gonna hire me on the job. Oh, you know, and I did it already. I mean, I signed the NDA, so we can't talk about the details. But when it comes <laughs> out, you know, we'll see. But to have people that are looking out for you, yeah. that care about you, and that you. This way you don't get discouraged building relationships, trying to build relationships only vertically when you can create a group that are going to help rise up with you and alongside of you. And that is the whole thing in the nutshell. I love throwing this out since, you know, I live in, in South L.A. Shout out to Nipsey Hussle. If you look around your circle and you aren't inspired, you're not in a circle, you're in a cage. The folks that are around you have to be on the hustle. You have to be on the same level. You've got to like, you know, Lowe's is doing, he's hustling, Karen's hustling, Educan's hustling. So I want to be around people that are moving, that they're doing things. Because there are a whole lot of people, as we all know here in LA, there's a whole lot of people that say they do stuff, mm. but they're not doing stuff. Right. So, I will be always and forever centered around people who are doing because that motivates me. You know, when you get into those days where you're like, oh, I don't want to self tape. I don't want to do this. I don't want to whatever. But then I'm like, oh, look, Lowe's just booked something. Okay, cool. Let, let's do this. All right. Oh, Karen, let me, to read, let me read for Karen because, you know, it, I know Karen's going to give me something on a tape that I can react to that's, you know, really going to get the attention of the casting director 
And yeah. so you got to surround yourself with people that are on your level. They're on the up and up and they really want to, you know, everybody, yeah. when I eat, everybody eats. That's, that's my rule, you know? So if you're about your hustle, come along, come along. Trains wow. the station. Like-minded individuals, right? Right. So, so Karen, I'm going to jump on the question with you. Let's talk about faith. How is that? Because this is, as we have been talking about, there's a lot of trials and tribulations within this industry. What what aspect are you do you draw on in faith, and how do you like how do you how does it apply to your life? How do you use it? Do you use it? You know, just let's talk about it. Hmm. I mean, I definitely know. Yeah, my, faith is a very impo- important part of things. I mean, I just remember <laughs> I laugh because I think I was. Um, visiting with someone um, after I'd come to LA and uh, they were back in Indiana. And I remember the person just kind of being like, well, you know, are you sure God really wanted you to be in California? And it was like, look, I was in Pennsylvania for like three years. I couldn't, like had to, couldn't get a job to save me. Like I had something here, something there. I come to California, no job, like barely a place to stay. Within the few months that I was here, um, one of my good friends from you know grad school introduced me to another friend. She was like, hey, I got some classes. Can you teach them? I was like, oh, yes, I can. <laughs> and at the place where I was teaching, all I needed was two classes to get my health insurance. Thank you, Jesus. But like, so, so, so I knew that I was supposed to be here. Now, the rest of the stuff, though, it's all about those Bible verses of, you know, you've got to endure, you've got to persevere. Because like, it is not, as we were saying earlier, it's not about um, overnight. But I think the other thing that Lauren mentioned that is exciting is when you uh, like have a neat group of people that you're around, it's exciting to see what they do and also to be able to encourage them because that just like, that just keeps you going. Cause you know that it's just like, okay, we're, <laughs> we're gonna make it. Um, and I'm just going to keep helping. <laughs> and, and I know that this is not in vain. And yeah, because once one of us get there, we are all going to get there because we're all going to help one another out. So for me, that's how, you know, I know. Yeah, it's just I just feel over and over again that the Lord just shows me like, yeah, you're you're you know, this is where you're supposed to be. Like you may get frustrated at times. And so, yeah, you'll need to pray that much harder. But <laughs> but yeah. Right. What about you, Educan? Yeah, I'm like Karen when it comes to praying, like and holding on to the that faith or that mustard seed, you know, and and speaking of seed, planting seeds, right, and just holding on because it, it's nothing else that I truly, truly want to do. That is 100% my passion. Yeah, I do. I have licenses and I'm certified and currently doing the personal training, but. I eat, sleep, breathe entertainment. I, be, I mean, I've been, do, I've been doing it ever since I was a little girl, ever since my mother put me in front of my grandmother dancing to Stevie Wonder, sign, sealed and delivered. So I've always been performing. You know, I was that kid that was dancing in front of the family. Dance, can you dance, you know? So it, I always felt like I wanted to be an entertainer. And I think, I know, I got it honestly because my mother is a singer. So she's an entertainer, you know? So when she had me all of that, because I want nothing more than to do that. And yeah, I, I stay prayed up. I stay hopeful, you know, and I have bad days. We've talked about it. You know, my accountability partner, Karen, you know, we, I, you know, I've gone, you know, down in the dumps, you know, and I'm like, you know, that's why you have those accountability partners to let you know if it's going to be okay. You know, you, you're entitled to feel that way. And I'm sure a lot of us have been there, but yeah, I'm holding on to faith. I stay prayed up and I just keep going. I hear that. Yeah. What about you, Lauren? It's absolutely crucial, you know, to to have that basis of of strong belief, if you know, higher power or in yourself. And when you get to those positions where you know you feel, oh, nobody's calling me. I don't have that. I don't have that. Having somebody, one person, any person that, you know, really believes in you 
and and wants you genuinely wants you to to succeed and do your best that changes the course of everything um i remember earlier in my career uh really kind of feeling like you know i i wasn't gonna make it like it you know maybe i should quit maybe i should give up you know my parents don't really understand what i'm doing they think i'm wasting my time a little bit but you know I, my sister has always been a, a source of, of guidance and, and faith for me and you know she said when you feel like nobody else understands you know what you're going through or, or you don't feel like anybody's rocking with what you're doing. She's like, I, I'm that person. I got you. So, so by having somebody that really kind of like centers you and grounds you and is like, you could do it. Come on, you could do it. You could do it. That means the world to everybody. And so as a creative, I try to encourage that in other people because I know what it's like to like, feel like nobody else gets that and nobody else understands and nobody else is supporting you. So I have a lot of friends that are actors that are musicians. So by having people, you know, like, Hey, my friend has an album out. You know, I have a buddy, um, when we were in college, he was investment banking, but he also wanted to be a DJ. So I was like, no, do, do, do the DJ thing, do it, go with it. And now he's like a very well-known international DJ. And we well, check in on each other because out of our group of college friends, we're the two creatives that are really kind of like kicking. And so we push each other. So if you have an out, al- I am a human billboard. So if any of you have a project, an album, whatever, I will absolutely push your project because you people work hard on things. And, you know, it's not always about I want to be rich. I want to be famous. Sometimes it's just about telling a story. And, you know, by being able to tell your story and be heard, it's it's grounding you to, you know, be who you are and to change the world, however that may happen. So by having just one person to believe in you, one thing to hold on to your faith, your family, whatever, that you know can help propel you and just keep you going because sometimes keeping going is is all you got it's very true yeah well really quickly i want to tell to everyone listening thank you so much for tuning into the blueprint podcast um if you have any questions for our guests feel free to add them into the chat and as we're going through if we see some questions up in here we'll we'll pop them out and we'll have some some fun with it i saw a question um that we're going to kind of interject right here it's um from this very beautiful woman named uh patrice wallace moore um aka my mama uh it says hi ladies uh what is the role you played that most represented the real karen lauren and edrican so um just even if maybe you haven't played the role yet what is it if you have tell us about it i'll go okay (laughs) It was my most most latest role that I played as your mama. (laughs) Because I am a mom. I have a teenage son. I have an 11-year-old daughter. So that that was like, I was definitely in my wheelhouse with that role. Um, Because I live it. I live it every day. Now, her mental state, okay, may may not have been who I am. But... (laughs) Just a but little I, bit different. <laughs> right, just a little bit different. But the mother role, definitely, for sure. Absolutely. I know. I feel like we had that one scene, and I don't think it made it into the film, but when we yeah. like, boy, you better get over here and hug me. <laughs> and it was during the pandemic where we shot this, so I was stealing all the hugs. I'm like, we we over here. <laughs> I'm like, I'm vaccinated. We, we tested. <laughs> I'm like, I know. Can I just have another hug, please? We held each other yeah. so tight. We, oh my god, I totally remember that. Oh my god, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's mostly that one for sure. What about you, Lauren and Karen? Uh, I think for me, it would probably be the character Emily that you saw in the clip, Smile. Um, I'm trying to think only because she's really. Um, without giving away too much of the story, it's like uh, uh, someone who's afraid of going to the dentist to have like a tooth filled. 
And I am actually sort of afraid of the dentist. My dentist is very nice. And the funny story is that a dentist office that we filmed at is actually my dentist office. I found that out purely by accident, but it wasn't until I showed up and got the address. I'm like, wait, I know this dentist office. And the lady that was there was like, oh, Lauren, we didn't know you were in this. I'm like, yeah, I'm here. So people, so when I got to the dentist office for my own appointment, like later, they were all excited. Like, oh, she filmed them. She filmed a movie here. You have to see the movie. All so they were promoting for me. So I nice. think being, you know, a, a dentophobe is probably the most me character I think I've ever had. I'm like, was that traumatic or <laughs> was it great to be grounded in a space that you already knew? Like, we need to know. the it, it was actually it was actually kind of comforting. Um, it's made it easier to go back now. Because something really absurd happens in the movie in the dentist chair. So every time I sit in the chair, I kind of laugh, especially when I'm in that specific chair. I, I laugh and I think about what happened in the movie and it, it always improves my mood. But yeah. Right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what about you, Karen? Um, I would say I haven't necessarily played the role, but the closest that I've been is actually in a short that I did with um, on stage with Lauren when we played the characters from Nine to Five. When I played <laughs> the character that Jane played, I would say, because there was a moment where we were actually advised, Lauren and I were advised to kind of switch roles and it was like, I don't feel right. Like, I don't feel right. So yeah. So, and the one of the reasons why it's like, no, I, I line up more so with the character that you on the plate. So, yeah, a little bit, a little bit uptight, a little bit prim and proper. That there, there's definitely a part of me in that. <laughs> I, I might have to take it back and say the Lily Tomlin role is me. <laughs> yeah, I think probably that one. Yeah, yeah, that was gold. All right, okay. My, my my dad over here asking questions. He's supposed to be out at dinner, sir. Just kidding. We're gonna ask. We're gonna get this question. How do you improve the opportunities for black actors? Also, how like how do we improve the support of black actors for black actors? Did I get that right? The support of black actors for black actors. Boom. Okay. That's a loaded that, question, Dad. That makes sense, though. Um, I finding your sense of community for to answer the second part. Finding your sense of community um, is a crucial part in kind of like having that support because you know we were able to find ourselves because we were all black students of a certain age in you know our particular class, and we all just kind of like bonded together. Uh, there are a lot of like Facebook groups and meetup groups that are popping up now specifically for black or for BIPOC creators. Um, and as far as improving those opportunities, I would say what we've been doing as far as creating them. Yeah. And um, I, I'm going to go controversial here. I would say <laughs> it starts with parents. Encourage your creative children do not crush that spirit like that. And that's the biggest thing because a lot of kids don't know that they have these opportunities or they don't think it's possible. You know, um, a lot of schools don't have film projects, even a lot of music programs and things now, but um, kind of nurturing this creative um, field in, in our communities, I think is, is the, the biggest way to do it, start it younger. Um, yeah. Really encourage not just the, oh, this is me in front of the camera part, but understanding that this, this business of entertainment is 100% a business. And in order to survive, you have to know how to navigate the business end of it. So I think uh, encouraging, especially in our community, um, business opportunities in film and television is a big part of it as well. Um, just nurturing creativity, creating those ops. That's, um, I think that's the biggest way to do it. it yeah, I mean, I would, <laughs> I'm sorry, we're all like, based on that face, we know what just happened there. But anyway, <laughs> um, I would echo what Lauren says, just with regard to parents encouraging their children, because I think, like, 
while there's the kind of flashy, yes, being in front of the camera, there's so much more to the business than being in front of the camera. And also when you know, um, like the power that one has as a writer, one has as a director, one has as a producer, if you learn those, what those positions are, what it means when they create them and being encouraged to think about that, I think is very positive. And then, I mean, some of the stuff, I just think that sometimes, especially for us as black people, because we're often in a minority. So like, I'll give you an example, like certain things, like I can understand we have opinions about things. And while I'm not saying to squash your opinions, I just think that unfortunately, because things that we say can be twisted around when we say them. So if in the situation where, and I'm thinking uh, just with regard to at Marvel, you know, Anthony Mackie just signed, um, you know, he's gonna be Captain America now. Um, but uh, in the past, he has said that, and I don't know whether this was like a Marvel suggestion or whatever, because I've been, <laughs> I've been convinced otherwise. Like, if you know any of the history of the character of T'Challa, you know, as much as we love uh, Chadwick Boseman and we're hor it's horrible that he passed, you know, they'd never think of not recasting Superman, Batman, Joker. They never think of not doing that. And also what that means, because to be the head of a franchise, that means a lot of black people eat in ways that, and so um, I understand that that might be the company line with regard to Marvel, but it's like, but that also cuts off an opportunity because if they, and you know, they can still do whatever they're gonna do in Black Panther 2 um, and you know, promote the women and that's great, but, I, we, we shouldn't have to have either or as, um, and I'm stealing this from uh, E-Man from E-Man Review, so I wanna give him a shout out too, but just for black uh, people with characters, it's always like subtraction for us in ways that for, for white characters, it's like, they'll have like, what is it in the most recent Spider-Man, it's rumored that they're gonna have like three versions of the character. And it's like, well. Everyone from every previous version, every movie, yeah. Right, yep. right. And then to give an example of if you don't, like if you just so get locked into, because this is something that Edricann and I know, maybe Lauren and Noah and Lowe's might not, oh, Lowe's doesn't know, because when I asked him earlier, the $6 million man, no one really knows that character because they never replaced him. So if you just act like, oh, we want to honor this position, it's like, yeah, but then no one's going to know that narrative or able, be able to tell that story. And while I am not a hardcore comic book head, in hearing everything that someone like T'Challa did, it's like, no, no, because we need, we need more opportunities for someone to have that lead role. Because within the Marvel universe, it's, you know, T'Challa is the main character and that just helps, that's gonna help a lot of people eat. And, and we know that there are enough black actors who could play that role. And again, no disrespect to Chadwick, loved him. But I just think also in who he was and how he talked about himself, he didn't ex necessarily expect that. Like he, yeah, anyway. So, but I just think that that's a difficult balance that we have because sometimes if you have an opinion as a black person, it can be used in ways. So just in supporting everyone, like sometimes for me, I feel even if you may disagree with somebody, I like the Issa Rae thing. Like I just support everybody black. <laughs> Listen. Unapologetically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She absolutely did. Yeah, and I, I, if I, if I can jump in here, and I just think that we we have to be open to new talent. We we recycle the same talent over and over again. And I understand. I really understand. You know their work. I get it. You know their work, or you know that agency that can provide these actors that is going to give you what you what you want. But that's why I, I like uh, Tyler Perry a lot. He. He is open to new talent. So I think to create those opportunities is to be open, open to new talent, you know, open to new, new writers, new directors, new producers, new actors, of course, just be open to new people because just because they don't have the name doesn't mean they don't have the talent. Ooh. And just, sorry, one more thing, just okay. to add to that. But also because, again, with a, a lot of the time with black actors, like just given the opportunity, like the only time that you had 
significant black actors in a movie together was usually like glory in a slave film in the past. Like you wouldn't necessarily ever have a black version of the ocean films where you had like all the top or at least three or four A-list black actors all in the same movie, actors and actresses. And those are the opportunities often that we are not given. And so, so again, so you could see different talent and see that talent working together. Cause you know, they're talented. Like, why are you acting like we can only have one? Like, you know, like this is Highlander. There can only be one, like, stop, stop. Listen, y'all is spitting the facts. I'm just yeah. saying. I'm just saying, I, I although being open, I hope Tyler Perry's open to a wig person because. Oh, he okay. Oh, we get into the team. No <laughs> shade. No oh, shade. Sorry. What did you say? What did you say? In my head and I had to get it out. I'm like, because those wigs are bad. What did you say? I can't hear it. What did you say? Oh, God. Like he's a wig again. person because the oh, last God. couple, some of the wigs on his show were just. <laughs> <laughs> No, listen. Let me tell you. If Tyler Perry want to put me in a film, I wear whatever wig. You got all that money. Like, listen. He's like, get the wig. Come on, now. get the get the headpiece. Bring it out. Uh, he gonna jump to um. Oh my god. god, that is hilarious. Oh my god. So um, you heard that first here on the blueprint. Right, okay. true lord. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. Um, so Montana has, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Montana has a question, and I'm gonna kind of pair it with one of the questions that I was gonna ask. Um, so she says, "Skills needed to successfully navigate are." And I want to kind of also blend that with, like, let's talk about the foundations of acting. Like, how do you stay brushed up between work opportunities? So let's talk about the skills and how the the technical side of like classes and etc. And let's give some nice nuggets for Montana as well. Definitely. I'll pop in there. Definitely studying. I mean, to first of all, you need a good headshot. You're going to need a good headshot so people can see you. Right. So that's first. That's like your first marketing tool. And then you got to study. You just have to study the craft. I stay, you know, stay in the class. I start back up uh, next week, actually. And I take uh, casting director workshops, uh, running lines with partners, you know, reading, studying monologues and things like that. So just stay polished. Stay in class, workshops, uh, beginning classes, scene study classes, commercial improv classes. Look for a good class to get started in. So definitely uh, stand in class, your headshots and your good marketing tools. Yeah, and then with the transition that our industry has made, um, you're going to have to know how to do a self-tape. There is that a good excuse for you not to know how to do a self-tape in your own home. Uh, you, you, you just need to do that and need how to know how to turn it over quickly. Um, and, you know, the blessing now with the new lenience, because in the past I was told that they didn't like if you, if your scene partner was on Zoom and now because of the pandemic, <laughs> you know, that had, that had to happen. But yeah, you, you have to have that skill down. And so make sure that, that that is tight in addition to, like that's more, again, technical, and I just, again, have to echo what Edukan said, though. It's, it's a craft and you have to study it. Um, for whatever reason, unfortunately, United States, as, I, as opposed to, I think, especially in uh, the UK and then also in Australia, we like to paint this narrative of overnight sensation and what um, both Lauren and Edukan brought up, even with regard to like a lot of young people who are in shows, they'd been doing stuff for like 10 years. Th like. Yes, it's an, an anomaly that someone could get cast in something, but in general, people have been working. They have been working, studying the craft, doing the work. And so you just, that's what you have to do, bottom line. And yeah, definitely to echo study, 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 never stop studying. I, you know, I work with and study under uh, working actors who actually will take classes when they're not on their show, you know? So everybody continues to stay brushed up, you know? As a singer, you would still do vocal, you know, vocal training and vocal lessons to keep your instrument sharp. That's the same thing you do as an actor, as a musician, you're always still going to be practicing and playing because that keeps you sharp. Um, I encourage reading, 
Um, I like reading actor biographies or autobiographies because it's nice to know the behind the scenes from people who've made, and sometimes even if it's just to, to see, oh, there was somebody else that was waiting tables when I was, you know, so that means I can do it too, even as an encouragement thing. Um, I also encourage actors, especially to read psychology or study psychology because our job as actors, it's so much more than just reading lines or memorizing lines that are on paper. You essentially have to breathe life into a two-dimensional being. So uh, you're looking at the lines and you're trying to make a fully formed vision. That includes, you know, if you're upset about something, how does that change your posture? How does that change your facial expressions? Are you breathing harder? You know, it's... um. You know, if you're in love, are you actually making eye contact with someone or are you being shy? Are you, so it's understanding how your your brain works and how your body moves that helps you kind of like flush out a, a full vision of who a character is. Uh, I encourage watching a lot of shows, movies, whatever kind of genre you're into um, to pick up trends, um, at least, you know, for film and television there's a lot of piggybacking. If you know you want to work on a, a crime procedural, watch your law and orders, watch your CSIs or what have you, just so you, you know, you can pick up on the lingo or how they frame or what outfits are they wearing so that I can mimic that outfit in my next headshot because this is who I want to go out for. So it's just kind of uh, observing so much of, of this um industry is projecting who you are. So let's, you know, let's observe, watch people, you know, sit in a park, look at people having conversations, how they walk, imagine the stories, just try to take yourself outside of what's on the page and make it as real. Authenticity is a huge kind of check mark for me in any script I do. What makes this realistic? You know, if I'm intimidated by this because the one thing that drives me nuts about uh, acting on television is that people have really intense eye contact and they'll stare you down and they'll get real close. But people don't naturally <laughs> talk like that. When you're intimidated by somebody, you're looking everywhere but at them. And that's what's real. So right. being as, as realistic and authentic and observe and read and watch, those are really the skills you need. And then... Right. Just confidence, believe in yourself. It's you true. know, because you I, you can do it. Just do it. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I'm piggyback on all. Well, I know if you could do it, just do it. Yeah. Um, for me personally, one thing that I feel like if I could tell my younger self this about pursuing music, I would say it's okay to not be good at things, because sometimes there's so much pressure and getting it right quickly. I'm a tutor, and so I, I know a lot of kids that I work with, they get frustrated, they don't, they get ashamed, they feel sad, they retreat because they don't get something right away. But when you're pursuing something like acting, especially acting for film, there are a lot of things that you don't know. You don't know about acting, that you don't know about the industry, and it's terrifying to put yourself out there. But as long as you've allowed yourself the space to really go for it without judgment, to know that this is a process that you were learning that sometimes, you know, you're going to send in a bad audition. Sometimes you're not going to necessarily get a take right. Sometimes you're going to shoot a project and when you see it, it's going to look like trash. Sometimes your acting might have been trash. But the fact of the matter is that it's all getting stored into a folder of experiences that you can use to help yourself grow. It's not the end all and be all of this of this process. And it's not gonna happen overnight. So you might as well get comfortable storing your files because in the end of the day, that's all you're gonna have to build off of is your experiences and what you and what you know. So Yeah, no, I so agree with that, Lowe's. And just like giving yourself permission to, I mean I don't like the word, but it's just to fail. Like sometimes it just doesn't, like stuff doesn't work. But as you said, you're not gonna perfect this. Like there are people that have been studying this for decades. You're not just gonna master the craft overnight or in a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Right. So don't put that type of pressure. It, it is all about learning. And oftentimes if we're honest, about our learning, 
it's when you like mess up that you have usually the biggest like, oh, okay, yeah, I shouldn't have done it like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, a hundred percent. I I will piggyback on that too. The let go of being afraid to fail. You were going to. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> like, no and, and, but no you doubt. should. You should because you you learn from those experiences. If you take a risk and and do something in a character and a director goes, okay, let's try it a different way. Technically, yeah. you might have failed, but they might be wanting to, you know, to look at something different and it's called a redirect, you know? So they're like, all right, now try it this way. By you mm -hmm. being able to let go of what you just did and try something else, you may find that that response or that reaction is a lot better. Yeah. So you definitely, you know, don't want to get hung up on getting everything right because a lot of times, um, and especially as a writer, your first draft is always your worst. Right. But the feedback you get from that first draft winds up being better and can help you build a more cohesive, well-rounded story. And it's something that, you know, can really take you to the next level. So don't be afraid. I had a teacher in high school um, who would obliterate my essays in red pen. And, you know, it used to be such a, a painful thing for me seeing all this red pen, but, you know, he left a note at the top of one of my, um, one of my papers that said, you know, it's like, you're almost there. You have it. So I learned not to be discouraged by the red pen and encouraged by it. And I still, to this day, keep multiple red pens. I do all of my editing and note taking because that's how my brain works now. Do not be afraid of the red ink and the red pen. There we because go. That just, that just means you got something else to build on and then you can take it to the next level later. Educan, I have a question for you. I hope hear. I have an answer. No, okay. you definitely do. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna transition a little bit. We, I know we kind of briefly talked on family, but you mentioned that you are a mother, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I want to talk about really quickly about how you balance that all in terms of, you know, your your kids are actors, you're an actor. Um, like how, you know, how how does that how does that work out for you? How do you make that make that happen as well By as you do? Because I already know you do. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I I just do it. Like Lauren said, just do it. I I literally just do it. When they get their self tapes in, as frustrating as it can be with them sometimes. Because right now, because we are at home, I'm I'm the set person, I'm the reader, I, I'm the wardrobe stylist, okay? And and I'm the mother, right? right? So it takes a lot. There, you know, I I go through it sometimes, but somehow I manage. I don't know. You know, God is on my side. I told you I stay prayed up. So mm -hmm. he, he, he allows me to be able to make it happen. The timing, sometimes the timing is, is off. And sometimes I'm able to call on my husband. And he, he works that traditional, those hours, you know, and sometimes longer. So he's mm -hmm. not available all the time. But when he is, I can call on him at times, you know. So that helps. And um, I think just the timing. And then sometimes the children have to, you know, I give them their size and stuff and they have to go over their size and do their things on their on their own because they're getting old enough to do that. But, you know, I employ them to start, you know, being more responsible and I just do it. Yeah. I, I get that all the time. I don't know how you do it. Hell, I don't know you, quite honestly. But it, also, I just do it. <laughs> really quickly about, uh, what about like familial support? Like, where do you, where do you, how does that, how does that affect you and how has that benefited or, you know, hindered your experiences? If that, well, my, my mother and my sisters, you know, if I need to talk to somebody, my mother is my, my sounding board. Like, she's my, and she's my number one thing, right? I remember, I remember when I first got here, just a backstory, when I first got here, I did a ton of background work, right? And she refused to think of it as background or, 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 or extra work. It was, it's extra work. Background work and extra work is one of the same. Is it not? Right. My mother, she was like, I said, mommy, we were doing extra. I'm, I'm an extra. She was like, no, you in the background. You're not an extra. You in the background. 
I'm like, girl, okay, I'm an extra. But that, that's that familiar, you know, support, right? She, she's my number one fan. So I have her. My husband, you know, he's there. I drive him half crazy. But he's he's supportive in everything I do. Every little endeavor that I decide that I want to do, he's there to help. So I do have I do have that support. That 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 group is small, you know, it's really compact, but I do have it. You know, I don't have like this plethora of, of family members that I can call on or who support it. Um, but like you said, that one, Lauren, when you have that one, you know, so I have that two up you. So that's where that that's where that comes from. What about you, Karen? Talk about your support and how your and how your family has played in this. Um well, initially, my situation was very similar to Lauren in that I have a younger sister who was very supportive. I think my parents, because I was just like, I'm just going to go to Los Angeles and see what happens. <laughs> and you so shot like, them. Exactly. You cold water over their head. What? But, so, but my sister has always been that support. And then, you know, you develop community and family and then they also become your support. So na- now my parents, I would say, are on board. Um, so yeah, yeah, but, um, yeah, family and, and also your, your acting community. Yeah. Right. And people don't understand it's a process for us as actors to make that transition. It's also a process for our families to understand, like they want to check in. Are you sure you're not crazy? Are you sure you're not tired of going over this audition or for this audition, not booking no jobs? Yeah. Are you sure? Like, cause they just, they feel like they constantly check in. My mom will always be like, you know, you could, you could be go try Broadway if you want, you know, you could, you would be such a good lawyer. Like she's so encouraging. She want me to do every other job. Cause she just want me to book something. And I feel, I feel that. And like, and so it's just like, you know, you know, it's hard the transition, but once they kind of get on board, like, you know, this is what we're going to do. It's nice. It feels like you're unstoppable. So Lauren, how's that for you? Do you feel the same? Is that? Yeah. And well, I got to tell you the first time I got that $800 check for a Reebok commercial, they were like, Oh, Hey, yeah, you're doing it. I'm like, yeah, no, there are opportunities, you know, you can make it happen, but you know, they're, they're fully on board now. And especially because I'm one of those unicorn anomalies whose day job is also in the industry. So I'm like, no, look, you do have real jobs in the industry. They do pay, uh, you know, cause being a producer keeps the lights on, but um, you know, they are supportive because they, they realized, and, and I also realized to it, you know, it comes with, with being older and that comes with, you know, experience is that you realize that they just genuinely want the best for you and they're worried about you and they don't want you like starve. You know, I imagine, you know, when I told my mom, Hey, I'm going to move to LA and pursue acting. She was like, Oh my God, you're going to be in a tent on the street. You know, that was her first thought. Cause that's, you know, she just naturally worries, but you know, when you when you actually put in the effort and you're like, oh, I've got this group, you know, we're rehearsing, take a look. And the best thing, too, is also always being able to show, hey, look at this thing I did. You know, um, it was a big thing, especially in, in high school. I did like uh, debate and speech forensics. So, you know, I'm like, hey, come watch me give this speech to my school, you know. And because I remember it was 9-11 and we were having a commemorative event and they my school asked me to give an address. So I invited my dad, who really, you know, aside from like a play here or there, had never seen me do like really any oratory kind of thing. So I invited him in in, you know, got a standing ovation in in the high school auditorium. And he was like, okay, yeah, no, I get it. But when they're able to see, you know, evidence of what you're passionate about, look at the short film I did, you know, look at this, you know, self tape I did, or this performance or this monologue I did there, they begin to understand because at first it sounds like a pipe dream but being able to have physical, tangible evidence, look at me creating, look at the, the checks I'm getting, big or small, you know, I am being paid for my talent and my services. And, you know, they're fully supportive and fully on board. And I would like to eventually cast them in projects because I am not the only actor in my family. And I think it also becomes 
it comes from the fact that my mom used to be an actor, mm -hmm. but I think in college she stopped and didn't really pursue it professionally. And, mm -hmm. and I really think she, you know, she's talented. That's where I got it from. So, you know, <laughs> I being able to eventually, I would love to, to put my, my family in a project because they are, you think I'm funny. <laughs> These people are great. So, you know, one day, but everybody's on board. And so found family or biological family, as long as you have that support, you can do anything. Right. I yeah. hear that. All right. So we're going to, we're getting close to, to the end. No. I know that time flies so fast, no. but listen, before we do that, we're going to have a little bit of fun. So y'all can all unmute yourselves. Cause it's going to be kind of like a quick rapid fire all right. thing that we have going on. All right. Okay. So really quickly, we're going to start with Educan first. If you could act alongside of one actor, who would it be, and in what type of project, like genre, drama, comedy? And we gotta keep it. We gonna keep it short because we have a couple of these coming up. I already know. I definitely want to work in a dra a dramatic film with Viola Davis. I, I just I want her to just yes. So I already know yes. Definitely. All right, it's gonna be like Tegan and Annalise and how to get them with murder. There, boom, 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 boom. Oh okay. my gosh! Oh, we 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 ready for that? All right, Karen. Karen, Karen you got yours. Okay, so since uh, since Edgepat yeah, what I most likely would have said, I'm gonna go with the drama with Angela Bassett. Boom. Yeah. Okay. 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 I want to see this. What about you, Lauren? I know, yeah. right? Angela Bassett coming in with the heat. Um, okay. Oh, man. Um, I want to do a psychological thriller. Okay. With? Denzel. Yeah. Oh, listen. Yeah. Oh, listen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Fallen. <laughs> yeah, no, that's one of my favorite movies. Uh, I just watched it last night on the Equalizer. Hundred percent, hundred percent, I would do it. Yes, listen, Fallen okay. is one of my favorites. Yeah. All right, all right. So, question. All right, here we go. Another one. What is your like, what do you think is your dream role? What is the craziest thing that you think, or not the craziest, but what is the thing that you would love to play? <sighs> I know so many. Mm -hmm. I know some people are like, oh, I would love to be that drug addict or I would love to be this. They want to go crazy because they want to be wild and crazy. But what is it for y'all? <laughs> okay, my immediate like to play like, Oh, go ahead. No, no, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I, I'd like to play um, a character like Pam Greer played back in the day where she's a badass, like <laughs> Foxy, Foxy Brown. Foxy Brown, yeah. Kicking ass and taking names, you know what Boom. I mean? Like, I want to I be able to fight, like get them up, like. Get yeah. in there. Yeah, definitely. Put my black leather on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Catwoman. We ready. <laughs> that part. Listen. Get your chocolate in there. <laughs> That's right. Okay. All right, Karen, what about you? Um, for me, I've always loved period pieces. So actually, I would want to do something in the UK with my British accent and all the Black British actors that I can think of. Yeah. Um, you know, mini series. Okay, like Bridgerton. She said, oh, my God. Bridgerton. Yeah. 100%. Right. There'll be additional roles there as well, right? Yeah. All right. All right. God. Like yeah. that. Everybody. <laughs> black and British, but right. coming next fall, yeah. The black and British. That's right. what Mika Michaela Cole, right? Is that her name? Yeah. Yeah. She, Michaela Cole, she did chewing gum and she doesn't mm -hmm. listen. Yeah. That woman is onto something. She's yeah. extremely talented. All yeah. right. And Lauren. Huh, let's see. I would definitely, I like playing kind of like smart ass nerds because that's very much me. Um, so any kind of like computer techy wise cracky thing, um, I also because it's not very prevalent, especially for for plus size women in Hollywood. I would love to play like a femme fatale, you know, little yes. sexy murdery spy action, something like that. Yeah, yes. I definitely something where there's like 
maybe maybe some maybe some fight scenes. I did one uh, during the pandemic. I did a film where I was doing fight choreography with an actual stunt fighter, and we were choreographing on the spot, and it was so fun. Oh. I'm like, I forgot how much like stage combat, you know, how fun that is. So oh, wow. a little bit more of that, I think. All right, all right. That's listen. I all right if. And this is going to be our last one for the day before we um, close out. But if you can give me one word that you would tell to your younger self, just one word. It's kind of oh, weird. One word. Yeah, one word. Okay, believe. one phrase. Believe. Okay, believe. She, she done went and did it. I was going to change it up because I second guessed <laughs> myself. But Educant said, when you believe. <laughs> you know. Okay. Okay. Sorry. We're not singing on here. <laughs> I'm only getting paid to host. Not, not to perform. Okay, I'm That's crazy. an additional show. Exactly. Talk to my agent. I would go with trust. Trust. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yes. Mm. Persevere. Oh, yeah. Persevere. Wow. Yeah, that believe, sounds good together. And persevere. Mm -hmm. Put it on a t-shirt. Exactly. I'd wear it. I'd wear it. <laughs> well, I'd wear it. Honestly, you already know that we could do this all day. And usually we like a black we usually pastor. Do. We're a black pastor, all of us. We'd be like, all right, all right. We, I'm almost finished. This is my last thing. 10 hours later. Let's do right. right. Well, this you know, we, did, we did have that six hour Zoom call. Like right. other people were jumping off, but we went for, it Listen. was what, like 2 a.m. when we called? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, it's and because, we started at like seven or eight. <laughs> when you're having like, fun online, and you online. really, it's yeah. true. When you're enjoying your company, the time yeah. it just flies. So yeah, I, yeah. I just want to thank you all for jumping on the Blueprint podcast. Really quickly, tell the people where they can find you, Educan. Tell them how they can look up your materials, how they can connect. and. Yes, absolutely. My website is edricann.com. You can find me on IG at unapologetically underscore who I am. Facebook looks edricann. And yeah, hit me up. Follow me. Let's connect. She said, look, it's right there. Done. Okay, Karen, where can they follow you? Okay. Uh, Facebook, Karen Michelle. IG, the real Karen Michelle. And mm -hmm. Twitter, I believe it's Karen Michelle. Look, she said this to Karen Michelle. Y'all gonna get it. Karen Michelle, done. <laughs> done. Period. All right, Lauren. That part. You can follow me on Facebook under Lauren Sloan. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Sloan, S L O N E, on screen. I like it. Well, all right, everyone. <laughs> so um, we're going to close out with next week on the Blueprint. We have Daryl Jacobs. Um, it is going to be such a great show. Um, and yeah, my dad will be back hosting. So y'all better turn up and let's have some fun in these comments and leave some great questions for uh, Mr. Daryl Jones. Um, so everyone, yeah, thank you for tuning in to the Blueprint Podcast. Thank you, Educan. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Lauren. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. This was so much fun. Thank Anything you. for you, Lozzie. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Dad, for, for pushing me yeah. and Mom for pushing thank me you, to Mr. do Moore. it. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you so much. So, <laughs> and there you have it. Fun. That's the Blueprint Podcast. We are closing out for you. We out. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Lowe's More, the Blueprint Podcast. Stay connected and follow us at our website, www.lowesmore.com. That's L O W E S M O O R E.com. You can also join the discussion on Twitter at Lowe's More and on Facebook at Lowe's More Jr. As always, thank you for pushing your mindset towards a better reality. This concludes the most thought-provoking portion of your day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast to stay fully up to date with everything we're up to. Until next time, be kind to yourself and each other.
what they teaching is a joke. I ain't buying it like I'm broke. Insufficient funds for insignificant talk.